Hey, what's going on team? It's Ricky with TechBud Solutions. And today I'm gonna to be having you guys tune on in and be able to watch me trade live in the stock market. So if you guys have never watched anyone trade live, I think that you're going to be in for a little bit of a treat. One of the first things that I wanna say is welcome. Uh, if this is the first video that you guys have ever watched on my YouTube channel, uh, my name's Ricky. I run the largest YouTube channel in the world for those who day trade in the stock market. Day trading live is something that I exclusively only offer for the Learn Plan Profit team. But one of the things that we get asked from our subscribers on YouTube is once a month, I go live for free to just give you guys a quick little taste of what it is that the Learn Plan Profit group gets to experience every single day. So I hope that you guys can sit back, relax, learn something new. Um, and if you guys have any questions throughout this entire live trading session, literally all you have to do is comment on the live chat, that's all. Um, if you guys want me to break down a stock, all you have to do is share that in the ticker call out format. So I hope throughout this video, I really earn your thumbs up. And if you guys haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, don't forget to smash that like button and click that subscribe and turn on those post notifications. So I'm gonna start sharing my screen just so you guys could see everything that is going on right now. Uh, as of right now, I think American Airlines is actually dropping. And uh, before we go ahead and get started, if it's okay, I know um, we have our Learn Plan Profit group tuning on in right now. But I just wanna say what's up. I just wanna, um, for all the new faces that we have going on right now, if this is the first time that you guys are tuning in, just say what's up. So what's going on, John? What's going on, Joss? What's going on, Entrepreneur? Uh, is that your, your Entrepreneur Euro? Uh, Luffy, Joel, Angel, Dan. Hope that you guys are having a good start to the morning. What's going on, Abby? What's going on, Arturo? Andrew, Michael, Larry. Where, where are we at? Here he goes, is it Har Harshees? Uh, there we go. Alrighty, what's up? What's up? First time, and we're going into the matrix right now. <laughs> what is going on? Um, so I'm super happy to have you guys here. One of the first things that I want to uh, congratulate you on doing is that um, you know waking up, especially if you're in California in the West Coast, right? If you're in Arizona, it's 6:30 a.m. Who wants to wake up early? I love sleep. I know a lot of you guys love sleep. Uh, but one of the things that I want to congratulate you guys on is for taking time and, you know, at least putting in the effort, right? And tuning on in and trying to learn something new. I really hope that throughout this video, you learn something new and I just get you one step closer to your overall goal. Uh, one of the things that I do want to remind you is that we did update our description in this video. So if you guys want to refresh your screen, I'm not going to say anything special for the next five seconds. So you guys can refresh your screen. And one of the things that we have going on today is um, just in appreciation of you guys taking time out of your week and tuning on into our free live trading session. Uh, for the next 12 hours, we're running our biggest sell ever, which is of course $75 off the Learn Plan Profit course. So if you like what you see today and you would like to tune on in for future videos, again, you guys get $75 off, which is the biggest sell ever. If and only if, of course, you see value in what it is that we do. So let's go ahead and get started and jump right into it. So. Let's go ahead and right now one of the one of the ETFs that I'm looking at right is forward slash NG. Well, this is the actual future. Uh, so natural gas had an aggressive sell off. It is now showing signs of an uptrend, but we're approaching previous highs. We're approaching 1.90. So 1.90, as you guys can see right on over here. Uh, 1.89, my apologies. So 1.89 to 1.90, we can see that natural gas approaches overbought territories, meaning that yes, it is pushing up, but it's not so much of a good deal. It doesn't do a very good job holding up on here. And one of the things that I wanted to ask you guys is if something shows to have a resistance right around 1.89, 1.90, what does that mean for natural gas? Should I be paying attention to you guys or should I be, a pay, be paying attention to D gas? Let me know. What do you guys think? So if natural gas is overbought and it's showing signs of a resistance, what side would it make sense for me to pay attention to? You gas that follows natural gas or D gas that's a little bit more on the oversold side. All right, so we have a couple people that have tuned in to maybe a couple of my videos before, so a lot of people are saying DGAS. Uh, like many of you guys know, you guys and DGASs are inverse ET ETNs of one another. So when natural gas goes up, you guys goes up. But as you guys can see, when natural gas pushes up so much, it hits a resistance and then it pulls back. And the really cool thing about the ETNs that I trade is that when you guys becomes overbought 
and overextended and not a good deal, then degas does the exact opposite. And this is the you know inverse, right? So this is oversold and then this thing pushes up when natural gas pushes down. So the really cool thing about this is it doesn't matter if you know natural gas is pushing up or pushing down, you could always make money on either side if you know how to pay attention to direction. The really cool thing about this as well is natural gas is my focus. My goal for anyone watching this is never for you guys to trade the same thing that I trade. My goal, right, the goal for each one of us is to be able to do something that is self-sufficient, right? It's not to be told what to do, but to understand what it is that you are doing. A lot of you guys have been paying attention to the overall market direction uh, and have noticed that you know the market's been pretty crazy the past couple of months, right? It's been either aggressively selling off or aggressively recovering. And one of the things that we are seeing today is you might be asking, how can I make money when the market is going up and how can I make money when the market is going down? And one of the things that I could say is, forward slash NQ is one of many options. This is forward slash NQ, this is the NASDAQ future, and this sells off when the overall market sells off, right? And the cool thing about this is it has correlating ETFs as well. So when NQ sells off, TQs sells off. So when the market goes up, then TQs goes up, right? So the market closed in the green yesterday, so TQs went up and it went up quite a bit. This is triple leverage. So it does pretty much three times of whatever the market does. So it comes at a little bit of a greater risk. But if the market sells off, there's the inverse ETF, which is SQs that goes up. And as you guys can see, just in the, since the market has opened, just since the market has opened and where it's at right now, it's pushed up 2%. SQs goes up when the market sells off. So if you've always wondered how could you make money when the market is selling off and you want and you don't want to short a stock, this can be an alternative um, that you know can pet, that that could potentially suit you. One of the things that I am going to be doing here is I'm going to be selling a portion of my position here. Here we go. Natural gas is pulling back a little bit. Nothing wrong with a little pullback for the boys. So got a sell some some of the position so there it goes we just sold a little bit of that so we're up 316 dollars on the day not off to a bad start um and we can see what else we got going on my position size has not been very crazy um i have not taken any positions larger than 100 shares on dgas just so you guys could see i did a little bit of pre-market trading um so i took my first trade at what was that uh 4 in the morning who likes to wake up at 4 in the morning so i took my first trade i was just having fun with it i was warming up i knew we had our free live trading session today so i was like all right i'm i i can't sleep i'm too excited uh and i did one little day trade i sold a portion of my shares uh and then i bought a couple more and i and as you guys just saw i sold another portion of my shares so uh one of the things that i like to do is i like to buy things for a good deal and then sell it for when i think that it's not so much of a good deal i like to keep things very simple um and i wanted to see if i could answer um any any questions that you guys uh might have so boeing is going yeah how many of you guys anticipate like did you guys watch my video yesterday um one of the things that i shared just my opinion right is the earnings was not supposed to perform very well right and everyone was saying like oh it's gonna go up it's gonna go up after love which is southwest airlines reported its earnings this news that they were not doing as bad as expected it's kind of like old news it's outdated it's two days old already so when american airlines then reports it and then it begins to pull back it's not much of a surprise especially one of the things that i said yesterday it could have gone either way i just like to make sure that i only take advantage of opportunities that make sense to me and this didn't make sense because it pushed up in two days 28 percent it doesn't mean that it couldn't go up anymore or it pushed up 32 percent my apologies um, and one of the things that I asked myself is that it's not that it can't go up anymore is that based off of the past two days performance, it's not a good deal. It makes sense on why it could pull back before it continues to uptrend. Of course, if you're a long term investor, you should have a little bit of a different approach. But for us day traders, it makes sense to take advantage of deals that are worth trading and to know when to walk away when things are not so much of a good deal. So it makes sense on I'm going to go to my airline watch list for all those people that didn't watch my video yesterday. Uh, so this is JetBlue down 5%, Hawaiian Airlines down nearly 7%, American Airlines down a little bit under 10%. We got Southwest Airlines 
down about 2%, not too bad. Uh, save Spirit Airlines, who's ever flown Spirit? A little scary, right? 6.3, uh, 6% is what it's down. UAL, United Airlines, down 8%. Jets, which is the ETF that I talked about yesterday, is down 4.8%. DAL, down nearly 5%. And then Alaska Airlines is down 6%. So the entire airline industry is down, and this should not come at a surprise as it only made sense, right? As these were reporting their earnings, they weren't good earnings, they just were not as bad as expected. And how many, can I, can I ask you guys a question? How many of your states, this might just be me, I'm based in here in Arizona, right? How many of the states that you live in extended their 30 day quarantine period or their quarantine period? How many of you? California did, Illinois, Nevada, Tennessee, Florida, Chicago, okay, Texas. It's pretty crazy, right? One of the things that I shared my opinion on, the video didn't do too good, right? But one of the things that just didn't come to me at a surprise is that it makes sense on why they extended it, trust me. I, I want Americans to go back to work just like as much as everyone else, right? Um, I want to be able to go back to normal. But at the end of the day, when infection rates and when death rates were at its peak, does it really make sense to make that you know, quick transition right back? Now what I'm understanding is that there's like these three different phases, right? Where they're going first and reopening essential businesses, and then some, and then some um, businesses that are maybe not as essential, and then and so on and so on. So with that, you know, being in mind, um, I think it only makes sense. So with that being shared and that extension taking place, it also makes sense on why that could have a negative influence on airlines, on cruise lines, on hotels and a series of different businesses, right? Because as we extend this quarantine period, it only makes sense that we're gonna prolong this negative impact that we're having on these businesses uh, and their overall gains, right? Um, so with that being um, said, I just wanted you guys to be aware that, you know, it's it has a lot, the market has a lot to do with anticipation and we can see that the overall market is not doing too hot right now. If we go to forward slash NQ, I mean, it doesn't. It shouldn't come at much of a surprise that we're selling off, right? That we're down on the day, although we were showing signs of an uptrend, right? We are now down, if I'm not mistaken, like two or three percent from its overall peak. Um, so just as of right now, the overall market is selling off. It's shooting in between the middle and bottom VWAP. It's making lower lows. It's making lower highs, as you guys could see. So it wouldn't make so much sense to pay attention to TQs. It would make much more sense to pay attention to SQs as of right now, as that direction is in your favor. Of course, a reversal can happen at any time, but until proven otherwise, I just like to really focus on direction. The same thing right now with natural gas. Natural gas is now at the middle VWAP. It's no longer making higher highs and it's testing. It's testing to try to see if it could make these lower lows. So I'm gonna set my alert right on over here. Let's see. I'm gonna set my alert here because just as much as natural gas can go down, it can go up as well. So your opinion on MRO. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll break that down, but uh, do you mind if I ask you to put that in the ticker call out format? You don't have to pay me um, to have me break down a stock. We do that all the time. Um, but yeah, please just po post whatever stock you want me to break down in the ticker call out format. So there it goes, natural gas still pushing down, which means that D gas is pushing up. So we're at $350 profit for the day. I only have 40 shares right now because I'm not too sure if this thing's gonna continue to push up or actually pull down. So uh, because of that, it, it still looks a little bit more on the oversold side. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna sell a portion of my position. So. So I just sold 20 more of my shares. We'll see where it goes from there. So, all righty, here we go. All righty, let's see. I wanna see what stocks you guys would like me to break down. 
Here we go. So we got uh, Matthew asking for J-E-T-S. Of course, let's go ahead and break that one down. So J-E-T-S, which is the airline ETF. Uh, as of right now, it obviously makes sense as the airline industry is taking a hit. Uh, so will JETS, right? Uh, one of the things that I talked about this yesterday on is that it was overbought, it was overextended, it wouldn't come at much of a surprise if it does begin to pull back. Looking at the RSI, looking at the MACD, we're now beginning to show signs of this pullback. So is the MACD, it's beginning to descend. Looking at previous support levels, you know, it makes sense on why it could pull back down to like, you know, $14 down to lows of around 13 based off of previous uh, support levels. So one of the things that I would do here is I would simply set my alert. Let's follow up with it instead of trying to find the bottom of something. Let's just do our part in getting in when the overall direction is in our favor. So it's not that I want to buy here. It's not that I want to buy here. It's not that I want to buy here. It's that I want to buy when it's a good deal and it's beginning to uptrend, right? And as of right now, it's doing the exact opposite. It's overbought and it's selling up. So let's just set our alerts and follow up with it when it begins to make much more sense. So um, here we go. Let's go ahead and see what else we can break down. So all righty. So we had a lot of people asking for Tesla. Um, here we go. But no one's posting it in the ticker call out format. So we got Christian going out of his way and uh, asking for a breakdown on Netflix. So here it goes. Netflix back up 1.9% overall. Uh, it makes sense on these like online streaming platforms why they went up during this quarantine period, right? More people were at home, the more people were um, obviously watching Netflix. How many of you guys? watch more Netflix in the past three months than maybe before, right? You guys have a, had a lot of off time. It made sense on why there was that direct you know, correlation. Uh, as of right now, it did pull back a little bit. So as we resume uh, this extension for this quarantine period, um, not only would it make sense for it to potentially be able to recover, but on top of that, it did sell off or did pull back quite enough where now it's a little bit more on the oversold side. It made higher lows and it can continue to uptrend. It's having a really strong start to the day. So I don't know if you're trying to approach it as a day trade or as a swing trade. One of the things that I do wanna share with you and it's one of the things that I talked about in um, an earlier video is all these companies that are trending and that are doing exceptionally well during this quarantine period, please understand that as things slowly begin to get back to normal, these stocks might begin to pull back. So just take that into consideration for a long-term investors. So obviously, if you're a day trader and you're just trying to ride the hype, um, that's all up to you. But at the end of the day, please understand the correlation between the demand levels right now in comparison to when things do begin to go back to normal, that of course it would make sense that Netflix will slowly begin to give back maybe some of the gains that it made. Um, so we just had a really strong push on DGAS. So good thing I sold a good portion of my position. Let's see what we got going on. So we got natural gas that hit overall highs right now of 1.88. I want to see if we can continue to uptrend. Let's see. All righty. Do you guys mind if I just, I know you guys are asking me to break down a couple stocks, but let me go ahead and I want to take a couple trades right now. So I'm going to buy. 20 shares at a time. All right, so I bought some at 229.73 right now for DGAS. So we'll set our alert back on over here. There is not anything crazy going on right now on DGAS. It's not aggressively pushing up, it's not aggressively pushing down. So we can expect it to push up a little bit more. So I'm gonna set my alert here. It wouldn't come at much of a surprise if it tries to test 1.89 once again, uh, but it did push up very quickly that it could pull back as we're seeing right now. Um, so it's actually showing really good signs of it having a resistance around this general range of 1.88 to 1.89, which is great to see, right? It's no longer as of right now, making higher highs anymore, which is a good sign for DGAS. So as this thing continues, to not show signs of it being bullish anymore. It's not aggressively selling off, but it's also not aggressively pushing up. So it's giving us more indication that it's, you know, hitting a resistance. It doesn't mean that it has to sell off. It just means that it's it's hesitating right now. So this is why I'm watching Diaz so carefully. 
So AAL is pushing up. Let's go ahead and check it out. So AAL, put, wow, all right, strong push. Looks like it found a support, a little bit more on the overbought side, uh, but obviously, because it's earnings, right? Uh, there is no question that there's gonna be a lot of volatility on American Airlines. It looks like it already recovered about 6%. It was down 10% uh, when we were covering this, when it was down at like 11.30. So now it's a little bit more on the overbought side. It makes sense on why it could pull back. Look at the MACD, look at the RSI. We'll see if the momentum continues to push it, but overall just make sure that you get in and get out when it makes sense and not just based off of the dollar value that you're trying to chase. So here we go. We got Degas back up here. All right. Uh, what advice would you give if um, even I have been doing my best practices and I continue to lose money? Should I try something new or so Edward? Uh, one of the things that I want to share when it comes down to trading um, it has a lot to do with trial and error and of course when you're just getting started Especially when you're trying to teach yourself, right? Uh, when you're trying to learn everything on your own um, That's how pretty much I learned it just takes a very long period of time and you're gonna make a lot of mistakes. Just think about this, right? The way that you learned how to drive a car, right? You went to driving school, you had an instructor, you probably had parents or some adult figure to teach you the very basics. Obviously, you didn't have a, you weren't a perfect driver as you got your driver's license or your driving permit, but at the end of the day, you had a general understanding to get you there. Now, just imagine if you had none of that. If they just put you on the road as someone that knows nothing about driving and what do you think will happen you're gonna get probably more accidents you're gonna make more mistakes you'll get more tickets it's gonna cost you more money and you might get a little scared of it right it's the same idea the whole idea of having structure you know you can just like I did learn off of YouTube it, you just have to know what it is that you are searching for and you have to understand that you're bound to make more mistakes when you're trying to do it on your own. It's not impossible, it's just more difficult. That's the whole idea of people ask like, what's one of the benefits of enrolling in Learn Plan Profit? That's one of the direct benefits. It's, it's a A to Z blueprint of what I think every beginner day trader should know. Are you gonna like walk out of after watching the Learn Plan Profit to be a perfect trader? No, but I can reassure you that you will be much better off than someone that is trying to learn and that it's like blind in the dark, right? The whole idea is when you have structure and when you have something laid out to you, it is much easier to comprehend and to understand what is it you're doing. So if you are struggling with the series of best practices that you are implementing right now, maybe one of the things that really helped me out is when I first began to trade, I really began to focus on lower cap stocks, on penny stocks, and that's what everyone was talking about at that time. What I began to see that really worked for me was not trading those lower cap stocks, but when I found my niche of trading ETFs is really when I began to see a big shift, a big change. I don't have to search or hunt for stocks. It's not that I don't have any more red days. Red days and loss is inevitable in the stock market. It's bound to happen, right? But the whole idea is to find your niche so you can get one step closer to not having to ask people, what should I trade? Where should I buy? Where should I sell? Should I cut losses? When you're asking those questions, it just shows me that you were not prepared when you took that initial trade. One of the things that I would do is there's so many different sectors and so many different areas in the stock market that you can take time to learn more about. You know, just like I focus on natural gas, you can niche down and focus on just trading the overall market direction, right? NASDAQ or S&P 500 and just focus on market direction and trading inverse ETFs of those or trading the actual or specific stocks that you see valid. Focusing on tech, focusing on gold, focusing on crude oil. Crude oil is at overall lows. It doesn't mean that it's a good deal. It just means that as of right now, it's very oversold. So there's so much opportunity out there. It just means that you maybe need to take a little bit more time to practice different areas and different niches and see which one resonates the best with, that you resonate the best with, my apologies. But uh, let's go ahead and See, so uh, Ricky, I'm new. How much should I invest to start? Um, what is the best indicators and the best time frames? Uh, how do I look today two or three times a week? All right, Ruben. So those are a lot of questions. Um, and I'm going to be watching Diaz right now. Diaz is at 229. Uh, 
one of the first things that I would encourage you to do is um, if I was in your shoes, one of the things that I did when I first got started is I focused on, I, I first started trading with real money, right? And then I began to make a lot of mistakes. I then discovered paper trading and simulation trading. One of the things I just wanna remind you is that when you're learning how to trade, focus on the learning part. Like it's, it's the simple things in life that people overcomplicate, no question about it. And one of the biggest takeaways is when you begin to learn and focus on learning how to trade, there is a big difference. Because let me ask you this, if you, instead of, I don't know what your account balance is, I don't know what you're okay with trading, and when you're learning how to trade, I really don't care. At the end of the day, when you're learning how to trade, your focus should be to learn. So instead of trying to prove other people wrong and, and impress others, at the end of the day, like you shouldn't be trying to impress others when it comes down to learning how to trade. If you open up a simulation trading account or you even open up an account and fund it $100, whatever you're okay with, right? And instead of buying multiple shares of something, think about this. Let's say that you're part of Learn Plan Profit and you're reviewing the course and you're learning what it, the, the indicators that we use. You're learning about the time frames that we use. You're learning about my setup, what, how it is that I focus on certain areas, right? As you're practicing everything, instead of buying multiple shares of something, what if you were to just buy one? Ask yourself that question. If you were just to buy one share of American Airlines at $12.31, right? If you were just to buy one share, would you really be focused on the idea of making money? Or would you be more focused on when does it make sense to buy? When does it make sense to sell? Oh man, it's breaking its pattern. Where should I cut losses? Do you get what I mean? It's the, the monetary aspect of trading is like the, the money is a tool in a tool in which that you can scale once you are ready. But until that point, all you should be focused on is understanding what to do and how to trade. And I feel like when you remove the idea of trying to make money and you focus on the actual understanding what it is that you are doing, you become more empowered to focus on what's important. So for all those that might be just getting started and that are a little bit of uh, a little bit scared, you know, the amount of times that I've gotten messages of people that like, hey, Ricky, like I wanted wanted to invest in this, but I was too scared or the, the scary part of trading is the fear of losing money. So if you remove that aspect of when you're learning how to trade and you just buy one share, you're focusing on what's important and not the actual idea of making money. When you're learning how to trade, making money is a cherry on top. It's like, cool, but it's not your main focus, right? So let's just make sure that as you're, you know, learning how to do anything, and it's not just trading, when you're learning more about real estate, when you're learning more about, you know, starting your business, right? When you're learning, even when you have a nine to five job, when you're, you know, put up on when you're shadowing another employee, right? And you're being taught what it is that you should or should not do. Your focus is not to try to make sales. Your focus is to learn what to do and what not to do, right? So let's just make sure that we understand our position as you're learning how to trade. So I hope that makes sense for you. Of course, Ruben, I appreciate you asking. I, I think that's a great question. I think not enough people talk about it and if you're if you're if you've watched any of my videos, you guys know that I always encourage people to practice what they learn first. I just feel like it's super overlooked. Uh, hey Ricky, can you tell me what broker you are using? I'm using TD Ameritrade Thinkorswim. It's not the best trading platform. It is just one of many out there. You can use Fidelity. You can use E-Trade, Charles Schwab, Interactive Brokers, Robinhood. At the end of the day, just because I use something or just because I do something doesn't mean it's the best. So for uh, same with my indicators. I've, I've been very open about this. The time frames that I use, the indicators that I use, they're just preference, right? Like there's many different ways on how you can tie a shoe to still get that same end result of tying your shoe. The same thing when it comes down to training. That was probably a horrible analogy and I really hope that you don't hold me to that one. Uh, but you guys get the point. There's many different ways on how you can still grow your account but you could approach it in a different way. So yeah. All right.
Alrighty. All right, so we got ticker symbol. Let's see, from Colby, Walmart. Oh, I like this one. And the reason I wanna talk about this one, so it's WMT, right? Yeah, so Walmart has been selling off. So Nick, uh, one of our buddies brought this to my attention and Walmart was doing exceptionally well and it's been selling off after it hit highs of 134 and it's been pulling back ever since. So it kind of brings up the question of like, hey, you know, can we buy this for a good deal as it can continue to option? As of right now, it's still selling off and one of the things, what is one thing, right? Even if, if you, you know, want to invest in Walmart long term, the goal should never to be uh, should never be to try to buy something at the lowest price point. What should you wait for as Walmart is selling off right now for all the, for everyone tuning in right now. For everyone tuning in, if I wanted to buy Walmart to sell it for a profit, what should I wait for before I consider buying? Should I buy right now or what should I wait for? Let's see. For everyone tuning in right now. Bounce, uptrend, confirmation, wait for it to break above the EMA line. At the end of the day, to keep it super short and sweet, confirmation is key. You guys might be asking, what the heck is confirmation, right? Like, what is that? What I mean by that is ask yourself this very simple question. How much easier is it to make money when whatever it is that you have your money in is increasing in value. How difficult has it been? If you've ever taken a trade, especially lower cap stocks, how difficult is it to make money when something is selling off? I'm not saying it's impossible, it just makes it more difficult. So let's keep it simple, right? As something is selling off, I agree. This is the time that we wanna pay attention to it. This is the time that we wanna set our alerts. It doesn't mean that this is the time that I want to buy. So what I can do is, this is the EMA line, and as of right now, it's making lower lows and lower highs. So until Walmart proves to me that it can uptrend, I don't want it, right? Because it could sell off down to 110, it can sell off down to 100, I'm not saying it will, I'm just saying that it can't. We don't know if it's gonna drop down to 119, so why am I gonna buy now? I would rather buy when the action is happening in my favor. And it doesn't mean that even then it has to go according to plan, you're at least taking advantage of an opportunity when it's increasing in value. Does that make sense? So I can set my alert here for the break above the EMA line, and I can also set my alert as it approaches new support levels just to stay updated. One of the things that I think people tend to overcomplicate is people think that like you always have to be trading something. Let me ask you guys this. For those that have experienced trading, one of the best things, in my opinion, and let me know if you agree, one of the best opportunities and one of the best trades that I've ever taken is when I wait for something to present itself. How many times have you taken a trade? Ask yourself this. How many times have when you've taken a trade and you're in a trade and then you see another opportunity, right? Or the trade that you're in, it didn't go according to plan and you, and you, and you, and you were just like, well, if I would have just waited and waited for confirmation, I could have gotten it for a much better deal. At the end of the day, your job isn't to try to trade every day, especially if you're under the PDT rule. Your job is to choose to take advantage of opportunities that make sense to you. And if you find yourself, think about this, if you find yourself more often than not buying in too early, then one of the things that you can begin to do is to challenge yourself to stay patient. And you, as you guys can see, a lot of people can agree with that, right? And if you don't agree, then at the end of the day, um, all power to you, right? If, if what you have um, is working for you already, uh, then great, right? Super happy to hear that. But at the end of the day, I'm here to share what it is that has worked for me and what has not, right? Uh, and as right now, DGAS looks like it's trying to push up once again. Let's see where we're at. So right around 400. I wanna see if I can hit my daily goal of $500, so, but, my position size have has been pretty small today. Let's see. Alrighty. Natural gas is trying to break through the support level, but it's holding. It's holding pretty good. Let's see. 
All right. How many of you guys are, um, how many of you guys tuning in right now for the first time have learned something new? Are you guys liking our live trading session so far? Not bad, right? Answer some questions. We take a couple of trades, do a couple of breakdowns. What do you guys think? You love it? I'm happy to hear that. So, I, and again, I really do appreciate you guys um, like taking time and tuning on in. One of the things that we ask you is all I ask you, right? If you're tuning in uh, for the first time and you really like these free live trading sessions, if you guys could just support the YouTube channel and just smash that like button. I really hope that we can at least earn your thumbs up um, as it really helps out our YouTube channel. And we would love to continue these live trading sessions in the future, right? Um, so all we ask you, if you would like to see more free live trading sessions, just smash that like button. It really helps us out. And um, it's a very little simple thing that you can do. Also, you guys can refresh your screen if you guys haven't done so already. And the first link down below can give you guys $75 off um, the Learn Plant Profit course. So if you guys want to be able to see this every day, just a friendly reminder. Um, it is something we are running our biggest sell ever, which is $75 off. Um, and you guys can tune on in even tomorrow, all of next week, and you guys get lifetime access, of course, to the course and to the live trading session. So it looks like natural gas as of right now found a support. There it goes. It's beginning to push right back up, pushing DGADs right around 230 to 229. Uh, this was a strong push. I actually think we might break above 1.88. That was a really strong push. Let's see. Uh, pulled back right away. Not too much crazy stuff going on there. All righty. We're right back at 230. I'm going to set my alert here to see if we ever break above 233. So I still find Diaz to be a pretty decent deal around this area. Just because I do doesn't mean that you should. I'm just, you know. Speaking my mind on this one. Don't judge me for speaking out loud. Let's see if I get it. All right, there it goes. Can we pull back? Watch this. All right, all right. It looks like it's still finding a resistance. I like that. There we go. All right, so we're testing this EMA line right now. As you guys can see, we're hitting that same resistance at 1.88. It hasn't broken above it. I actually thought it would this time, but it has not. So that's why I decided to buy more of um, D gas, which again goes up when natural gas pulls back. What do you guys think about my little tech buds mug? Best way to start the morning, right? <laughs> Um, let's go ahead and see. So now we're testing this SMA line. One of the things that I do have to say is that the SMA line right now for natural gas is a very, very strong support. So something that we have to take into consideration. As of right now, it's not really aggressively dropping below the SMA line. It's not aggressively dropping below the middle VWAP. It'll pull back and it'll touch it and then it picks right back up. So uh, we have to give it to that. that. That's why you know I'm not fully invested in D gas right now because I don't have full confirmation that it's selling off because it's not right. So right now I'm I'm trying to be careful with my position size and stuff like that. So there it goes. We're right back at 230 to 229.75. So we're testing, we're testing, and there it goes, pulling back once again. So let me see if I can answer an open-ended question while I'm waiting for natural gas. So, 
so I thought that you could only make three day trades per week. Can someone explain this to me? Yeah, so um, under the PDT rule, yeah, you could only make three day trades within a five day period. It's not a week, it's five business days. Um, but the PDT rule only restricts accounts that are under $25,000 that are margin accounts. Of course, if you have a cash account, you're not restricted. But at the end of the day, if you have over $25,000 in your trading account, which I do, um, you don't get restricted, which is something that I've shared multiple times before. So, uh, But I appreciate you asking the question and uh, thank you for tuning on in. There it goes, pulling back. Uh, Ricky, can we take a look at BA? Oh yeah, Boeing. Let's check it out. So I'm just a little scared to check it out when it's at such a critical point for natural gas. So I have my alert set, but we'll see. So uh, Boeing, just like American Airlines, pushed up. It's now finding a resistance. It looks more overbought. Look at the MACD, look at the RSI. I see a lot of pullback potential. Can it continue to uptrend? Of course, we like to call these critical points where, where they're at a point where it could either go either way. It's not pushing up anymore. It's not selling off. It's just consolidating. So this is where you need to be very careful. This isn't where I would try to enter a position. This is where I would wait for confirmation to see which side it chooses. So I hope that that answers your question. All righty. So natural gas still holding. All right here. So today is the natural gas report. And there it goes. Look, we are testing one dot. Let's see. Are we going to test it? One dot eight eight. I'm going to have to be careful with this one. Oh, there it goes. One dot eight eight. Do you guys see that? So natural gas just pushed up. I'm going to reduce my position size here. So it's just consolidating too much. There's not a complete break of pattern or anything like that. I just like to reduce my position size when things begin to be unclear, right? Uh, when the direction is not as clear as it was before. Um, let's see where we're at here. There it goes. We're, mm, I'm still going to do it. I'm still at least gonna sell, I'll sell 40 shares. There's no reason to rush the process. It's still very early in the morning. All right, so I sold 40 shares at 229.95. Um, I sold it in between the bid and the ask. So one of the things that I like to do is I like to look where people are buying. I like to look where people are selling. <laughs> and there it goes, it's actually going according to plan. What's new, right, when I sell too early? but. Um, I would rather be safe than sorry, right? Especially market opened less than an hour ago. Um, you know, my goal is something that is challenging, but is not that difficult for me, right? So I'm already so close that there's no reason for me to try to make it or break it and put myself in an uncomfortable situation. Uh, some of you guys might like the way that I trade. Some of you guys might not. At the end of the day, I'm here to trade what makes sense to me and not to necessarily try to please others, right? Um, and I, I hope that you only do the same as well. You should never be trading to impress others, to try to prove others wrong. Uh, there's no revenge trading here. It's trade what makes sense to you. And if you're more conservative than I am or more aggressive than I am, embrace it. There's nothing wrong with being different. We're all wired in different ways. And that's one of the things that makes us you know, rather unique, right? So here we go. We do have the natural gas report in... Um, 15 minutes in about 16 minutes. So a little heads up on that. NG report in 15 minutes. There's an instant reaction. Today is one of my favorite days to day trade. So I'm excited. There it goes, strong push. Look at natural gas, a strong sell off. It must have broken below the SMA line and there it goes. Let's see. Oh, do you guys think that we're going to break below the middle VWAP? I will be buying the Learn Plan Profit Program. What's going on, Ruben? Well, welcome to the team. If you guys have any questions, just feel free to direct message me on Discord. Uh, but again, if not, then I think for the next 12 hours, the coupon is available and you guys can refresh your screen. And it's that first link down below if you guys don't see it. 
which should give you guys $75 off. Here it goes. We are waiting. Just so much consolidation right now. I'm going to sell a little bit more of it. I'm just not that eager to try to make it or break it, you know? Let's see. There's a lot of buyers right now on natural gas on my second screen right here. We can see the flood of buyers. Let's see. All right. Should sell, sold 30 shares. All righty. All right, so now we're more at a support level right now for natural gas. It's bound to most likely push up unless it actually gets confirmation. And if it sells off, then I can add more to my position size once I have that confirmation. But until then, I'm not too eager to try to make it or break it. So uh, Amazon, uh, when does Amazon have its earnings? Was it today? After market central standard time. All right, so after market. Uh, would it come at much of a surprise that during this pandemic, Amazon performed exceptionally well and that would push up to due to overall earnings? Um, I think so. Obviously, Amazon is at $2,438 per share. So it's kind of expensive for some people. Uh, but there is no question that although it is overbought, it does offer a lot of upside potential because of how this report can be in its favor. Am I going to invest in it? No, it's just not a good enough deal for me to care for it right now. doesn't mean that you shouldn't. It's just not my style, right? Um, but on the day, it does look overbought, uh, but it's showing signs of these like higher highs and higher lows. And I think that it will kind of just play out that way today because we're approaching its earnings. I really don't like to trade too many stocks during earnings like season uh, because there's just a lot of volatility, a lot of hype, a lot of manipulation to, just due to the overall news. And I kind of like to stay away when things begin to cool off, when it begins to aggressively sell off, um, I like to allow it and give it time for it to find a support. And then I'll go in when things are a little bit more mellow, right? Um, that's just what I like to do. It doesn't mean that you should, it's just, again, my style. So let's see. So should we stay live? I, I was gonna ask, cause I, we already passed 30 minutes. We're at that 45 minute mark. Um, should we stay live for the natural gas report? Would you guys like that? Or should I just close out the live stream here? What do you guys think? So the nat natural gas report is in 12 minutes. We should, oh, okay. So we should? You know, wait, Isma, how many likes do we have in this video? Not enough. How many? 1.3. 1.3? How many people do we have tuning in? Really? So we have... How many people tuning in? Let's see. I'm going to get a little offended right now. We have 5.7K people tuning in, and we only have 1.3 likes. Real quick, let me just ask you. Can we hit 2,000 likes in two minutes? So 700 of you that have not liked it, if it's too much for me to ask, I would love to host these free live trading sessions for you, right? Oh, we Yeah? Already? All right, 3K. <laughs> no. No, 2.5, so... Wait, is it? 2.7 now. Wow. Okay. I feel like we should we should gift them something. What, what should we do? I feel like we should gift them something. Uh, I, we are running a giveaway for Learn Plan Profit members, so that's another incentive. So what, what should we gift to... What do you think? What about... How about uh, one of our banners? Our ban yeah, for yeah. people that are just tuning in. You don't even have to be part of Learn Plan Profit. One We're of the things. A refund at the end of the day. Ah, the well, yeah. that that would be a little bit different. We wanted to do it for everyone that's tuning in. I don't I don't want to just uh, yeah. for those people that are already part uh, or that are joining Learn Plan Profit. We already have a giveaway that's starting and that will end in two weeks. So if you enroll today or you enroll within the next two weeks, uh, you can participate to win. And there's going to be three winners. Now, I also wanted to, for those that you know can't join Learn Plan Profit, I wanted to thank you guys for tuning in and I appreciate you guys going out of your way and dropping a thumbs up. Um, I was gonna do a, a banner. I think, I think that would be pretty cool. That, that just might be my opinion, but it's, 
it's this. So one of the things that we'll select is I'm gonna select a random person in the comment section. Natural gas is selling off. So from the Tech Buds Apparel site, just a little gift. I'll ship it to anywhere, even if it's around the world. I'll pay for the shipping. Um, you guys can either choose, this is a flag. It's a three by five, right? Or three by, yeah, three by five. So three, five feet, three yeah. five feet by three feet. So you guys can either choose this day trader flag or this 1% better every day. Cool? If we can hit three, I think we can get at least half, 3.5K. 3.5K likes, that would make me happy. That'd be pretty cool. We'll see. But um, I really do appreciate you guys tuning on in. So let me know what you guys think. Gift me. We might have to do more than one. But I like it. All right. So, um, let's go ahead and get back to this. So the natural gas report is in nine minutes. And I think we're going to have a pretty interesting report ahead of us. So um, do you guys think that I should close up my position? Oh, there it goes. It found a quick support. I still have 20 shares opened on Diaz, right? I believe I still have 20 shares. Yeah. So uh, we're probably going to have to close that out before the report just because I don't like to be influenced by the way the, the report moves. I like it. I like the 1% flag. Nice. All right. All right. Let me do a couple breakdowns. BUD. What's going on, Matthew? I appreciate you again posting it in the ticker call out format. So BUD, here we go. So overall on the 180 day chart, it just looks overbought. It's currently descending. Look at the MACD. Look at the RSI. We're approaching earnings. So just take that into consideration. Look at the same resistance level. Same resistance level at $50. It didn't hit that, but it hit that general range and now it's pulling back. So it offers pullback potential before it continues to uptrend. uptrend. So just take that into consideration. I would set your alerts and instead of trying to find it and get it at the very bottom, I would personally try to get in when it's actually increasing in value and after it confirms the support, right? So I appreciate you um, asking for me to break that one down. All right. Uh, so is there any free trading courses? So um, I have over, I, I'm pretty sure I have over 2000 videos on YouTube. You're more than welcome to um, take time, do your own due diligence and practice what you learn off of not just my YouTube channel, but I'm sure many others, right? Uh, the thing with that idea is that, you know, there's a lot of lack of structure there's gonna be a lot of missing pieces of the puzzle. So that's the whole idea behind having access to a course where there's structure and not just that, but one of the things that of course we offer within Learn Plan Profit is our live trading session every day. So if you see value in this where you can tune on in every day, Monday through Friday with the team and we break down stocks, you can watch me trade live. One of the things that I love about trading itself is that it's challenging. You know, I think this is why a lot of people come back to it. It's not because it's easy, but it's because it's challenging. It's a challenge for me every day as a day trader and you get to observe me take on this challenge um, in the stock market every day, right? And you get to learn from my mistakes. You get to learn from what I do well and you get to surround yourself with other people that are doing the same thing every single day, right? So it's, it's um, I am very proud of the type of environment that we have within our community. So here it goes. So Jonathan is asking for VIPS. Why does that sound familiar? All right, VIPS, overall 180 day chart, very consistent uptrend pattern. We've broken this one down before as I can have my alert right here. So it is on the oversold side. It is an overall uptrend pattern. It's not increasing in value. I'm gonna set my alert for the break above 17 and let's follow up with it again. The trend is our friend and as of right now, this thing can begin to sell off. So instead of trying to catch it at the very bottom, let's just wait for confirmation. Uh, we are six minutes away from the report. I'm gonna have to be safe on this one team and I do apologize, but I'm gonna close out my entire trade. So I'm just gonna click 100%. I'm gonna close out my trade and I'm gonna sell this at, let's see. I'm just gonna sell this at 32. What can we do? Oh, it's pulling back already. I'm just gonna do 32 flat. 
Uh, I don't think I'm gonna get filled. Let's see, let's see. Oh, all right. So I'm fully out of my degas position. How hilarious is that? Oh my goodness, as soon as I sell, it happens almost every single time where I sell and it just does not go according to plan. So pretty aggressive pullback, as you guys can see by the EMA line, um, that would have caused DGAS to push up. So now DGAS is at 334, <laughs> that's pretty hilarious. Um, let's see, same bro all day. Hey. I, <laughs> It's better to lock in profits. One of the things that we love to say is that no one goes broke by locking in profits. And although it sometimes does suck to lock in profits a little early, um, you know, at the end of the day, um, I'd rather be someone that's, that stays green rather than goes from green to red. I think that's one of the worst feelings, right? Let me go ahead and break down. I'll break down two more stocks and um, we should be set for the natural gas report, which is in four minutes, four minutes. So M R N A. Ah. All righty. So M R N A, uh, super overbought, super overextended. Um, as you guys can see, it's trying to find a support right around forty-five dollars. Um, it's not really making higher highs anymore. I would set my alert to see if it breaks above the EMA line. I would definitely look a little bit more into this on why it's pushed up so much. If I'm not mistaken, this is a company that tried to come up with a drug for what is this? Let's see. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, this is a company that is based off of trying to create a coronavirus drug, right? Uh, and is in the works of trying to create a vaccine. So I would set my alert for both sides. I just, um, it does have an up and coming earnings report. So just take that into consideration. Uh, last earnings it did push up as uh, so right now. There's obviously a lot of hype behind this one. So uh, Yeah, direction is unclear right now We don't know if it's going to continue to sell off or actually begin to push up. It is up on the day. It's up nearly 2% but um, It's already at its resistance of 47.50 So I wouldn't be too sold on that idea and there it goes natural gas is back at its support level Let's go ahead and break down one more one more here we go can we get one good one so pstg is that procter and gamble no person all righty we have two minutes left so definitely it's been showing signs of an uptrend i like how it's been validating this ema line so i think that's great that you're paying attention to something that's been increasing in value it's pushed up enough this is just a quick little analysis that Every time that it gets near the SMA line, which is the screen line here, it doesn't do a very good job holding above it and it sells back off. So with that idea in mind, it's overbought enough that it does offer a lot of downside margin in comparison to the upside potential. If you beg to differ and you think that it offers more upside than downside, then you can follow up with it. But I'd be very careful if this thing breaks below the EMA line and breaks its overall pattern. So I would set my alert here and follow up with it. So natural gas just had a really nice push. So Alrighty, uh, we have one minute left. One of the things that I like to say again, this is my favorite day to day trade. One of the things that I love to remind our traders is I closed out my position on natural gas or on D gas, as you could see, right? I'm up $334 on the day. Uh, market opened less than an hour ago. Friendly reminder, if you do not wanna be influenced by the natural gas report, close your position now or forever hold your peace because if there will be an instant reaction, so please, just do your part in managing your risk. So which way do you guys think it's gonna go up? 30 seconds, 30 seconds. Do you guys think it's gonna be in favor of UGAS or DGAS? Let me know, what do you guys think? UGAS or DGAS? What do we think, team? You, oh. <laughs> All right, so it looks like we have a mix. There it goes, reaction in favor of you gas. So this is why we lock in profits, right? It acted in favor of natural gas. D gas should be pulling back right now. Look at that. So maybe I'll buy 10 shares here. 
Dude, it pulls back up so quick. Just gonna buy 10 shares. All right, well, I'm just gonna set a limit order just to get. Now, it, this one was not good. Check AAL. A lot of consolidation right now. Yep. Wow, natural gas is changing its direction. Look at that. Went from green to red, and we do see this quite often. So it pushed up. There's a quick change of direction. I tried to get into degas, but I didn't get filled. All righty. So we still have a couple people trying to submit for the 1% everyday flag. I like that. Uh, take a look at UAVS. I'll do it just because I keep seeing you comment. <laughs> so I just want to make sure I answer your question. I, I do apologize for not getting to it. I'm not ignoring you. Ah, uh, I would not touch this. Uh, this looks like a complete pump and dump. Um, high risk, high reward. And it's so overbought that it looks like it's pulling back right now. So uh, you guys cracked me up. Well, um, there we go. Uh, the natural gas report just came out. It looks like this one was a little bit... This one was not good. Normally, there's a very distinct direction. It'll either push up or push down. Right now, we're literally at a break even. So not too much going on there. Uh, but one of the things that I just want to say before we close out this video is, first of all, um, I really hope that you guys learn something new, right? Uh, at the end of the day, that's the whole point of these free live trading sessions for you guys to kind of get a better understanding of what it is that we do every single day as day traders. Uh, it's not super crazy. Every day is not super exciting. Some days, of course, are better than others. Uh, and loss is inevitable in the stock market. So one of the things that I just wanted to remind you is I really do appreciate you guys taking time out of your Thursday. You guys woke up super early. You guys tuned on in and it wasn't because I'm exciting it's not because it's entertaining maybe you might find it entertaining but at the end of the day you are doing something today that your future self can thank you for and i just want to congratulate you on that um, i really hope that i earned your thumbs up in this video and friendly reminder just to close out this video two things if you guys refresh your screen there's a 75 dollars off coupon with the first link down below it will be available for the next 12 hours it's our biggest sell ever. So if you've ever wanted to join Learn Plan Profit, now would be the time. Of course, if you're not ready, we're not here to force you, right? If you have any questions, direct message me on Discord. At the end of the day, we just want you to surround yourself with people that empower you and that push you to be the best version of yourself. If you think that we can do that, then we would love to work with you guys on a closer basis and have you be able to watch me trade live every single day, right? On top of that, like you guys saw, for those that smash that like button, um, you guys just have to wait for the video to post and then you guys can comment down below. Just make sure you guys like the video and comment down below what flag you guys want. And I think we're gonna be selecting more than just one winner. So if you guys want our day trader flag or the 1% better every day flag, all you guys have to do is drop a like, subscribe to the channel and comment down below. I really do appreciate your guys' time. Wish you guys an amazing and re best uh, rest of your Thursday. My goodness, um, I have to drink a little bit of water. But like always, team, let's make sure that we end the year on our green now. Take it easy, team.